Hey everybody, this is Dylan with Critical Crafting. I have a ton of unpainted minis, and I feel like that's a problem a lot of people in our community have. So I learned something recently I wanted to share with you guys called batch painting. And that is a way that you can very quickly paint a ton of minis. <laughs> So I've been looking at all of the different things that I have to paint, and I have drawers and drawers of unpainted minis. Either that I've bought or that I have 3D printed, and it can be extremely overwhelming when, you know, I, I throw some stuff on the photon and I print out six, uh, you know, new orcs and I've got this war band going. I'm looking at going, oh my gosh, I have so much to paint this could take me forever um so i started doing what's called batch painting and that's essentially like creating a factory line for when you're painting minis uh, and i'm going to kind of walk you through how that looks today i test printed these minis as a collaborator with 3d printed tabletop on our lost adventures kickstarter which is an all-in-one 3d printed terrain minis maps encounters everything you need to run a DD game and I thought these minis would be really great to show you guys some batch painting stuff. So anytime that I'm batch painting, I want to make sure that whatever color scheme I'm set on is the right color scheme. Because sometimes if you go in, go through the whole kind of assembly line process of batch painting and you've used the wrong colors, you end up having to go back and redo everything. <laughs> So any time that I batch paint, I paint at least one miniature with the color designs or the color palette that I'm thinking of, just to make sure that it looks right. And I won't paint it all the way done, but just enough that I can kind of see what it's going to look like. So for this one, this was actually pretty difficult because I had a couple different armor color designs I was thinking about. I even had a few different skin color designs. And for orcs, it's kind of hard because a lot of fantasy has them green and D&D 5th edition canon has them gray. Uh, and if you look you know, on wiki or whatever, D&D kind of says, well, they're green to gray. And looking at Lord of the Rings, uh, they kind of span a whole bunch of different skin colors. So I didn't really have a, a base to go off of. I had to figure it out. What do I want these to look like? So I decided to try both skin colors, the green and the gray that I was thinking about, as well as both colors of armor. And I ended up really liking both of them and deciding that I was gonna do a little bit of half and half here. So with batch painting, you're treating this like an assembly line. And what I like to do is, you know, get all my minis kind of together and then figure out what's the first thing I'm gonna paint on them. So for the orcs, I decided since I took so long figuring it out, the first thing I was gonna paint was their skin color. So what you do is just go ahead and paint every single one of them. And you can be a little sloppy for the first couple coats because you're gonna go back and kind of clean things up and do your detail work later. So all I do is paint every single one, all the skin tone, I guess the base uh, color for that. For my gray skin orcs, I combined flat black from Vallejo with flat blue, knowing that I didn't want a straight black undercoat because using that as the armor undercoat and then having both of them be gray, it was very likely they'd look too similar. So I decided to give it a little hint of blue and offset the skin just a bit. So here we have all of our orcs after that first step, just putting on that base skin tone. Could start with the armor instead, always start with a larger area for your first step. So the next thing I decided to focus on with it being a larger area was the armor. And I like to paint, you know, the larger areas that are all the same color. So the weapons, the armor, the belts, their boots, I'll paint all of that at the same time. And again, you can be pretty sloppy with this. You don't want to paint onto the skin now that we've got that down. But again, we're going to go back in and do some detail work later that kind of covers those things up. So you kind of have a little bit of freedom here to be a little sloppy, be a little more aggressive with your paint and you'll be fine. We'll cover it up in the end steps. So for my gray armored or iron armored orcs, I decided to go with a flat black from Vallejo base coat. And for my red armored orcs, I actually mixed the flat black from Vallejo 
with their flat red to create something that was kind of a deep, darker red that I could use as kind of the shadows and whatnot once I've added those highlights in. So now we have all of our orcs with both their base skin tone and their base armor coat. The nice thing about batch painting is it gives you the ability to kind of jump around and paint what you want to paint. Uh, just be sure that you're kind of painting all the same stuff. So if you decide, hey, I kind of feel like painting this guy's bow. Okay, paint the bow and then also paint the wood on the other guy's spear and the handle on the axe. So you're kind of saving time by using the same color, you're not cleaning your brush as often, you're just kind of moving through the assembly line. So the next thing that I worked on was adding all their uh, wooden weapon segments. So add that brown, it was just a base flat brown from Vallejo, and we'll come in and add some highlights to it during our detailing steps. So here's where things get a little bit more creative. So I want my orcs clothing to be all kind of different colors. I don't want them all wearing, you know, a yellow loincloth. So you're still gonna be painting all the clothes one after the other, but you're gonna be using different colors to do it. So this might take you a little bit longer than some of the other steps. The reason this step is gonna take you a little bit longer is because you're going to have to be continuously cleaning off your brush when you're switching out colors. And on top of that, you know, selecting the right colors and maybe painting over colors after you look at it and go, eh, I don't really like that there. Uh, can be a little more time consuming, but this is one of those areas where you're starting to differentiate your orcs. Now that all of our base coats are done, we're gonna move on to dry brushing. And since I started with the armor and I feel like it's one of the things that really makes these orcs stand out, I decided to focus on that next. Dry brushing, I've discussed in a lot of my videos, essentially you're getting a good amount of paint onto your brush, um, painting that off onto a surface. I normally use my hand because I can kind of see the consistency. And once you have a very small amount of paint left on that brush, you're gonna dry brush very lightly over whatever areas uh, you're focusing on. And that's gonna bring out the highlights and the texture. So for the dry brush for my red armor, I use the Vallejo Flat Red. And for the grays, I actually mixed together the Army Painter War Paint Matte White with the Vallejo Black to create a pretty light shade of gray. After dry brushing the gray armor, I found that I really didn't like how it was looking. I was a little heavy handed with my brush and there was a lot of brush marks on the pieces that I didn't like much. So I decided to go ahead and kind of blend those a little bit with a black wash. I simply mixed some water with the flat black from Vallejo and painted that on each of the gray armors, waiting for it to dry with the idea that I would come back and add some highlights in with another technique. So here I found myself a little bit pressed for time and I decided to do something easy and paint all of their bases with the base coat of black. And that's another really nice thing about batch painting is if you find that you have a very small amount of time to work on something, you can do one of the easy steps on a whole bunch of minis and feel like you've accomplished something pretty big, even though, you know, it only took you a couple of minutes. Batch painting, I also like to apply as many washes as I can on as many minis as I can at the time. It helps to kind of blend things together and especially if you're using some white or some other like very bright color, adding that wash to kind of dull it down before putting in a few extra highlights by hand later after you know you dry brush and then put the wash on there. That can really help to push the mini and make it feel um, very, very cool looking without doing too much detail work. Okay, so at this point, we have put on our base coats, our dry brushes, and at least one layer of wash. And they are looking really nice, but they are not quite done. Next, we're gonna go into all the detail work that kind of cleans things up, as well as adds in all those little things that make these really stand out on your table. I decided to go back in and touch up all of the sort of iron colored armor that I had. Like I said, the dry brush coat, it really just didn't look great and after washing it, it had doled it down quite a bit. So I found that instead of dry brushing, I took a sort of watered down white and applied that just very, very lightly. So gentle. On the edges of all of the armor to kind of give it this highlight that really, really stood out and allowed me to still have some of those darker areas and make it feel like a, a deeper gray or iron color 
And then I went back in and did a very, very light dry brush to kind of blend in that hard white line with the rest of the armor. And that really helped to make it feel like it wasn't just one big white line that had been painted on there and sort of blend everything together. So at this point, we've done all of our base coats as well as done some of our dry brush work on our weapons and armor. But it needs a little bit more. Just like with my iron armored orcs, I found that once I'd made them pop, now the orcs I had with red armor looked a little dull. So I decided to go ahead and basically do the same thing. Um, use that thin, kind of watered down, or straight from the bottle, honestly, bit of paint to paint those thin little lines um, on the edges of things and then go back in and dry brush to kind of blend that all together. After making those changes, I felt like the armor really popped. Okay, so now on to detailing. I go ahead and apply, for these guys I wanted war paint. So I took straight colors and just applied them very, almost brutally, uh, imagining these guys kind of smearing this paint right onto their armor or their skin. Um, and I think that this really helps to add a lot of character and it especially differentiates the miniatures on the table so that when your players are saying, hey, I wanna attack that orc with the ax, now you've got a couple different things. Not only is each axe wielding orc um, you know, has a different armor color or a different skin color, but maybe now they also have a war paint on them too. So it really helps to differentiate them on the table when your players are trying to say who it is they're attacking. And for you as someone who's running the game uh, to keep track of what orc is what, because that can get really confusing when you're throwing a huge army onto the table. At this point, I started painting on the highlights for the orc skin, and I did this with both a combination of just putting uh, light coats of that paint down and dry brushing in the areas. So kind of beginning with putting in some spots of highlights that were very exaggerated, and then dry brushing over those a little bit to help blend them in. And the colors that I used for this were the Vallejo Flat Green and the Yellow Ochre, and just kind of blended those together to come up with that nice sort of yellowish green color. For the gray skinned orcs, I had a little bit of trouble finding the appropriate color. I found that the gray orc skin that came with the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments paint set was a little too close to their armor and it really didn't look great. The lich skin from that same set was pretty good uh, and I found that combining the lich skin, orc skin, and ethereal blue worked really well to kind of help their skin pop and not look so much like an exact replica of their armor color. To finish the bases, I dry brushed on Army Painter's Leather Brown, and the reason that I didn't do this earlier was because a lot of the time when I'm working on their larger areas, like maybe their, you know, shoes or some of their armor or whatever, I'll accidentally get paint on the base and end up having to repaint it anyway. Once I was finished dry brushing that Leather Brown on, I then took the Shadow Wash from Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments, and I just washed that over the bases. I don't normally use this wash because it's super shiny and doesn't really look good on things like cloth, but if you're making like the pits, uh, orc spawning pits from the two towers, it looks pretty nice. So after doing our base coats, a good amount of dry brushing, a little detailing and some washes, our orcs are looking pretty darn good, but there's still a few steps to do before we're completely done. It's at this point that you're going to want to do all of your final detailing, and most of that is going to be adding some highlights to the cloth that's on the orc, but it'll also be things like, you know, adding in the white on their tusks, or painting in an area that maybe you missed painting before, or covering up an area that you would put some paint on, or maybe you find you don't like it. So when you're doing this, you're just going to want to look at whatever mini you're painting and make sure there aren't areas that are a little too flat, they look a little like they're not super detailed or they don't have enough highlights, and you're just going to kind of wrap things up. Some bonus content for you people who might want to make some really cool blood effects is this Tamiya Color Clear Red. I learned about this paint when I was talking with the people from the Parabellum booth at Gen Con, and so I started talking to them, how did you do this? You know, what, what kind of paints are you using? And they said, this is super easy, dude. Just you know, get it to me a color, clear red, paint it on, 
This is completely dry, which is crazy to me that it has that level of realism for a paint that's just one coat of. So now you have batch painting as a new technique to drop into your crafting arsenal. I took about 45 minutes each to paint these minis using this technique, and that's a speed paint, but honestly, I think they turned out really nice. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Critical Crafting.